Okay guys, so it's technically blackout, so I won't be posting this, but I wanted to film something. So I recently just heard how the All-Star game wasn't very fun, and I was just thinking they really need to switch up the format, but how I would do it is this, right? So here's some of my ideas of how I would make the All-Star game game better. First off, you have to kill the idea of basketball. You have to play basketball, but you have to approach it like a child, right? So what would I do? First off, I would make some radical changes. One of the first changes I would do is the in the all-star game, I would make it that players can score on both hoops. That'd be the first thing I'd change, right? So they would jump in the middle, but instead of it going back and forth like that, they would do it and then players can score on one hoop or the other. Just that would completely change it. So then the idea is then you're calculating it based off of the players. And then after using that format, you would have a set amount of points for the first, the first um, stage, right? Then the second quarter, right? The second quarter you would have where now the audience can get involved. And what the audience can do is they can vote on different modifiers for the players to play. So in the second quarter, there can only be two modifiers. And then as you build up, you build more and more modifiers for each of the quarters, right? And so, and what's cool is that you'll have temporary modifiers and you'll have permanent modifiers. So one, like being able to score on both hoops, right? That would be a rule change. And the idea is that every single time you would tell the coaches so that the players would have to be paying attention. Because let's say for instance, the players go back into autopilot and they start playing on one hoop, but you can score on two. You'll have someone run down to the other hoop on the other end and they'll score there. And they'll know real, and then the score will keep going up. But then you can have other modifiers as well. So another modifier I would be is where the audience, and the thing is you have to get the audience involved, right? That's how you evolve the all-star game. So once you get the audience involved, what you do is because now you have apps, right? So what you can do is you can have people who watch the all-star game, they can come in and then they can vote on a modifier. So you can have a player modifier, a court modifier, or a team modifier. And so the player modifier would obviously be targeted for the player. And what you could do is you can either restrict the player or give the player a bonus. So for instance, you could give the player a bonus like Luka Doncic. And what we would have is that as people watched games and they accumulated NBA points throughout the year, watching content and buying NBA stuff, they would be able to play in the All-Star game. So one of those things would be able to be is that people could invest points into a player, they could buy bonuses. It would be kind of like the Hunger Games, where you can buy bonuses for your player, the team, or to change the court, right? And so one of the things you could do, like a player bonus would be like, Luka Doncic's next three, you could do a player bonus where Luka Doncic's next three is worth 15 points, right? And so what happens though is the, co the, the audience votes on it, and the audience tells the coaches and that the bonuses are happening in real time, but you don't tell the players and the players have to find out from the audience or from the coaches, but you have these modifiers happening in real time. So you have the narrators and the things coming in where the things will happen and then the players have to pay attention to the score. So what happens is the players might just be playing normally. Luca will shoot a three and then his three, instead of being worth three is now worth 15 points. And then they'll just like, wait, what? And then they'll realize like, they'll call a timeout and they'll be like, what happened? They'll be like, oh yeah, Luca had a modifier on him where his next three threes are worth 15 points. So what'll happen then is all the players, because they don't wanna get blown out, will start guarding Luca. So then Luca will now have to pass out and everyone's gonna keep denying Luca the ball. That will force the players to play because it'll be fun. But then what can happen is because the audience is seeing that, the audience, remember, who is voting and playing in the game, now can change another modifier. And you can have a separate buzzer that goes off during the game that's not like a normal buzzer, but it's just like a buzzer that goes off that lets the players know for the East and for the West or for the players, the players can choose their theme that they had a modifier turn on. And you create little cues inside of that. So for instance, you could have every single player pick a song 
or something that will play like a, a nice seven second jingle during the game. And when that jingle goes off, that player will know I just received a modifier, but they won't know what the modifier is. They won't know if it's a restriction. They won't know if it's an advancement. So what they can do is while the game is playing, they can ask the audience or they can ask their coach and the coach can tell them what just happened. Right. But the idea is the audience is picking these modifiers and then that's affecting the game. And then that, what that does is first off, it forces the players to engage and it forces the audience to engage and it creates an all-star game where the players and the audience are engaged with each other. Because imagine if one of the modifiers is like you put a team modifier that basically keeps the team from being able to score. So imagine the team is scoring and they're dunking and they're shooting threes and then their score hasn't gone up. And they're like, wait, why is our score not going up? And it's because the East put a West block. So people who voted for the East, the audience decided to block the West and where the West in order to unblock it has to get a dunk from a player who's on the bench. And so what that does is that forces that player to come into the game. And so what happens is then you just start seeing the audience and the players start interacting and then people start feeling like they can control the game. So it feels like the players and the, like are versing each other, but they're also versing the audience or they're with the audience. So there's going to be people who want to help their players. So there'll be people who'll be like, oh, we vote. And then we got a LeBron modifier. So like a LeBron dunk is worth 20 points. So then there, everyone's just going to be feeding LeBron. But then what happens, it's like, you can also have another, like a really, really powerful modifier, you can have it be where there's a detriment. So it's like, okay, a LeBron dunk is worth 20 points, but a dunk on the other side is, will take away 10 points. So it's like every time they dunk on the other side, like in the East, they'll get plus two points, but it's negative 10 for the West. And then it just scrambles the score. So what it does is because the conditions are changing every minute, it forces the players to engage. They're not just bored. They're not going on autopilot. And what happens when they're engaged? The players are having fun. And when the players are having fun, you'll get effort out of them because they'll want to win. Because they'll be like, wait, the rules are changing all the time and we need to do that. But you have to really mediate it. So in the first quarter, there's only one modifier. In the second quarter, there's two modifiers. In the third quarter, there's three modifiers. In the fourth quarter, there's four. And that just builds and it makes it more complicated. So that's where you start seeing more methodical basketball. And you're going to start seeing that in the fourth quarter, the third and fourth quarter. You're going to see guys who really try to understand the rules. And like in halftime, you can have the two modifiers that are voted on and that are permanent. So then you only have two variable slots in the third and fourth quarter. And so then as a result of that, the audience is then really engaged with the All-Star game. They're watching the All-Star game and they're trying to affect it because there's going to be people who want the East to win and there's going to be people who want the West to win. And so if you have an app that's giving real-time data from the audience that's uploading to the players, then the players, the thing is you just restrict the game. And then what will happen is the players will have to adapt or they'll lose. And these guys are competitive. They don't want to lose. And they're going to be having fun because they're going to be like, oh my God, this is kind of fun, right? Because so, so imagine a game where you guys do a court modifier when it's like, okay, only one-on-one -on -one for the next three minutes. And so it's one-on-one -on -one for the next three minutes, but then you could say one-on-one -on -one, and then you could be like alternating players. Like every player has to score one-on-one. -on -one. So you could set a rule like that where it's like, okay, Dame's got to score one-on-one. -on -one, so that's an easy two. Okay, Luke has got to score one. That's an easy two. But then it's like Chris Paul. And then what happens is suddenly the players are trying to be like, who's the matchup to get this guy to score one-on-one? -on -one? Because until that guy scores one-on-one, -on -one, you can't score any more points. So you can have another player like LeBron, he can go one-on-one, -on -one, dunk, windmill, do it 10 times, but the points don't count because you haven't fulfilled the modifier. And as long as that modifier is still there, you restrict the players. And that's the idea is you create games by restricting people. So if you restrict the players, what they can do in the All-Star game and you open up other avenues, what'll happen is you'll get the players more engaged, right? 
And you can put on modifiers like, for instance, like a Luka dribble is a turnover. Or you could be like a Kyrie dribble is a turnover. Right? So Kyrie will get the ball. So imagine it. They're just playing. Kyrie gets the ball. He hears his jingle. He doesn't know what's going on. Kyrie gets it. He thinks he's got a modifier that's going to make him get like five points. He takes a pound dribble and then it's a turnover. And he's like, wait, why is it a turnover? And they'll be like, you got to ask your coach. And then he'll go to his coach and they'll be like, yeah, so the audience voted that every time you dribble the ball, it's a turnover. And then Kyrie's like, wait, so I can't dribble? And they're like, yeah. So then Kyrie's out of the play. But that means Kyrie can still shoot. Kyrie can still finish. But Kyrie can't dribble anymore. So now you're going to force other players to have to dribble. Or you can have another modifier where it's like Anthony Davis has to play point guard. So it's like, wait, what? So yeah, Anthony Davis has to dribble the ball up half, half court. And Anthony Davis has to play point guard. Right? And so it's like, what does that mean? And it's like, okay, so that means he has to dribble the ball 10 times every single play before they can score. Or you can have other restrictions like saying, okay, in order for it to work, you have to have 10 passes. Like little things like that. And so if you're always restricting the players and they have to constantly pay attention and you're just changing it from time to time to time, what will happen is they'll engage. But the coolest part is you're getting the audience to engage because the audience is picking. So then once the audience is picking, that means you'll draw people to the All-Star game because they'll want to watch it in live real time. Because that will enable, that will make it an event. You want the All Star Game to be an event, and you want it to be different than any other NBA game. So how do you do it? You make it where the audience can directly affect the play. And once they do that, it's like they're playing the game. It's like they're playing 2K with their players. That's how you evolve the NBA All Star Game. And like, I will literally show you guys how to do that. I'm. If Adam Silver, if you see this, I'm making it, da, 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 da. Get this video to Adam Silver. And I'm going to share this video with NBA people. And I'm serious. See if this is, if you think there's any validity to this and you care about the All-Star game, share this video and get it out there. Move this all the way up. I don't care if I get credit for it or not. But what I'm saying is, guys, and like, let me just say the date and time so that I get credit for it because I want to make sure that I do that. Because I, I definitely want the credit. Because I'm so it's February 22nd, 2022, right? And guys, this is what I'm saying it's 1220 and it's 135 in Mountain Standard Time. So, guys, what I'm saying is this it's like modify the NBA All Star game, get the audience involved, get the players involved, and get the audience involved to restrict the players. Once you restrict the players and you open up rules in the court that make it different, the players will be engaged and they'll, they'll love it. They'll look forward to the All-Star game. It won't be this work or this chore. They'll literally look forward to the All-Star game because they'll be like, man, I wonder what crazy events are going to happen. Because if you have these little restrictions and they're always floating out and the people are always, audi the audience is getting invested and having to like go in, what will happen is then suddenly you'll have all these little miniature clips and you'll be able to show different aspects of it and you'll be able to show the rule modifiers. So you'll be able, for instance, like there's a modifier where John ja Morant was, had to score a dunk before the team, before the West was able to score again. So you might have a whole sequence, you might have four or five minutes of the West just trying to get John ja Morant a dunk. Right? And they might be like, wait, you're just trying to get Ja Morant a dunk. And the East is just trying to keep Jaw from getting a dunk. Right? And so it'll be like, like the score can't run up until Ja Morant gets a dunk. And so every and then you can say maybe that make that dunk worth 20 points or whatever. Or seven points or eight points. But then imagine that where it's sequence after sequence after sequence where they're having to drop plays and they're trying to figure out how can we get draw a dunk. But then what happens is then the players can also, we can have it where the players can also push back and have modifiers to make it easier. So maybe you have to figure out a way to balance that out where they go into coach huddles and they're like, man, we got to figure out a way to like, open this up and that's the thing is like it's like you're getting the players and you're getting the audience involved so it's like there's players on the players have their own allegiances but then they're also versing the audience and so that's where the popularity contest starts becoming a thing where players that people like people will try to make the help them win the game but players that people don't like people will try to make their game make them lose the game 
and they'll be petty. And then you'll get people who will be voting for that. And then that will create resistance for the players. So that will create a challenge, which will engage them. And when the players are engaged and they are having fun, the audience and everybody else will have fun. That's how you improve the All-Star game, guys.